Welcome to the work from home edition of the Market Week in Review for the week ending May 29th, 2020. I'm Julie Zhang, and I'm joined today by our quantitative investment strategist, Kara Ng. Hi, Kara. It's so wonderful to see you. Hi, Julie. Good to see you. Hope you and your family are doing well. So on today's call, we're going to go cover three topics. One is the update on a global policy responses across the world. Two is on the outlook of the U.S. labor market. And finally, we're going to talk about some of the flare-ups of past risks. So, Kara, to get started, you've said in the past Market Week in Reviews that economic recovery depends on three things. One, the path of the virus. Two, the amount of economic damage from the government containment measures. And three, how effective government and fiscal policy are in mitigating economic and financial damage. So, given this backdrop, do you have an update on currently policy responses around the world? Yeah, sure. So first, when I think about those three points, the word that comes to mind is unprecedented. The virus impact is unprecedented. The amount of global economic damage is unprecedented, but also the amount of policy response is unprecedented. This week, Japan doubled its stimulus by approving an additional $1.1 trillion in new spending. This brings Japan's stimulus to about 40% of Japan GDP. Also this week, uh, the European Union proposed a 750 billion euro recovery plan. That's two thirds grants and one third loans. The proposal uh, still needs to be approved, but if it is, this package may be a game changer. The size of the stimulus package is over 6% of GDP and is the largest in European history. This proposal also represents risk sharing in Europe with the issuance of euro bonds. Euro bonds are government bonds issued by the European Union instead of individual eurozone countries. Euro bonds were first proposed during the European debt crisis, but never got off the ground. This stimulus package still needs approval, and there's some opposition from some more frugal members of the EU, but this would be the next watch point to stabilize the European economy and unlock some additional market performance. Thank you for that global perspective. So let's switch gears a little bit and talk about the U.S. economic data that's coming out. So given the recent jobs data, has the U.S. labor market hit bottom? Well, if nothing else goes wrong, there is some tentative evidence the U.S. labor market is hitting its bottom. New jobless claims have been falling for the last eight weeks, and continued jobless claims fell for the first time since before the U.S. containment measures. These are signs that some workers are returning to their jobs after the easing of U.S. containment measures. Our next watch point is the U.S. employment report next Friday. In the last report, the April Labor Survey, um, only about 10% of laid off workers said their job loss would be permanent. We want to keep an eye on this number for the May employment report. So in a frictionless world, a pause in economic activity from containment measures would only cause temporary job losses. When containment is over, economic activity resumes and all of those jobs come back. Unfortunately, In the real world, there are secondary effects. If consumer confidence falls, there may be less demand for goods and services, causing firms to reduce their labor force permanently. The sour job market further reduces consumer confidence in spending. This negative confidence spiral could turn a temporary shock into a sustained one. It has major implications for the economy, corporate profits, markets, and thus investor portfolios. We'll definitely keep a watchful eye on that U.S. employment report coming out next Friday. Um, Speaking of if nothing else goes wrong, famous last words, let's talk about some of the U.S.-China tensions that we're seeing flare up again. So after successfully signing a phase one trade deal in early 2020, we're seeing headlines regarding renewed tensions between the world's largest economies. Can you give us your thoughts on that and its implication for the markets? Sure. So rising U.S.-China tensions could be a major disruptor. Uh, some background. Um, in last week's market, we can review senior portfolio manager Megan Roach flagged that China proposed a national security law in Hong Kong, which critics say infringes on Hong Kong's freedoms. This week, that controversial proposal was approved. In response, the U.S. declared that uh, Hong Kong was no longer autonomous from China, which has implicated for uh, special trade exceptions for Hong Kong the city. The U.S. could also introduce punitive measures. President Trump has a news conference later today on China. The risk is that rising tensions escalate into another trade war. Mm. Trade war disrupts global supply chains, investment spending, and business confidence. Aspects of the global economy are already on shaky ground because of the pandemic. A re-escalation of that trade war could be a fatal blow to the already weakened global economy. We know that governments and central banks globally have already pledged to do whatever it takes to backstop the damage from the pandemic, but there may be limits to the effectiveness if the policy is to fight two wars. Developments here have major implications for the balance of risk in investor portfolios and is a major watch point. 
Wow, certainly a lot of watch points. Let's hope that there is not an escalation again. So thank you so much for your time today, Kara, and for sharing your insights. Thank you all for joining us. We hope you and your family stay healthy and safe and see you next time. Thank you. Hi, I'm Eric Ristovan, Chief Investment Strategist for Russell Investments. If you like what you saw in this video and want to see more like it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.